What is up everyone? It is DJ Rick Webb here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be walking you guys through everything you need to know around getting leads in this industry and how you can book every single lead. Just kidding. You will never book every single lead. Actually, it is a very bad thing in your business if you are booking 100% of your leads. You're leaving room on the table. So we're going to get into that all in this video. Roll the intro. So we're in the DJ Life podcast studio today to film another business related video. If you guys want to learn more about DJ business and how to run a profitable DJ business, I highly recommend you guys go subscribe to the DJ Life podcast. I'll leave it in the description down below, but it's youtube.com slash DJ Life podcast. It's also on every source out there, Spotify, Anchor, Apple's podcast, you name it. It's on every single podcast platform. You can listen to it. I sit right here, my buddy Eric, who runs another profitable DJ company in my same city. Both of us talk business. We bring in guests from all across the industry that you either know or you should know that are doing wonderful, amazing things with very profitable DJ companies. Go check out the DJ Life Podcast. Anyway, let's talk about leads. I do want a preference. I run a multi-op DJ company, so I'm gonna be talking about a lot of these numbers in the sense of a multi-op DJ company, but a lot of this is gonna to apply to you single-op DJs as well, and I'm going to mention some differences along the way for both multi-op and single-op and some recommendations around leads and how to get leads and stuff and strategies for each one because I used to be a single-op, now I'm a multi-op, I understand both worlds. So in your DJ company, you're gonna get leads and then you're gonna funnel all of these leads, these are just some of the terminologies, we're gonna take all these leads and we're gonna funnel them through a sales process and that's what we're gonna go through in this video in depth. But before we get into the exact funnel that I use in my company that you can apply to your company when it comes to the emails and the text that we're sending out and how we process our leads to book them, I first want to talk about where you get your leads because there are two different categories of leads out there. We have mass market leads, which typically these are paid leads where you're paying marketing dollars to get leads. Some of these mass market leads include Wedding Wire, The Knot, which are the same company called Wedding Pro, or you have wedding shows or wedding trade show events. You have Google paid ads, YouTube paid ads, and Meta paid ads, which is Facebook and Instagram, and there's even TikTok ads now. All of these are sources where you're gonna pay money to get leads. The other form of leads I like to call direct leads. And these are things like vendor referrals, like being on vendor preferred list, client referrals. And for the most part, these leads don't really require any money necessarily. They just require a little bit more of time and energy when it comes to doing events and getting referrals from past clients or building rapport and networking with other vendors. Now, at the end of the video, I'll get into a breakdown of kind of what you're gonna expect from these leads and what my recommendations are for multi-ops and single ops that are trying to grow or stay kind of the same as to where you want to get your leads from and where you should spend your time, energy, and money. But first off, let's just talk about the concept because because with any leads, whether you're getting them direct or mass market, we have to take all of these leads and funnel them through a sales process to actually book our weddings and events. So with all these leads that we have, no matter where we're getting them, we need to take all these leads and take them and put them in a funnel. And what this funnel is gonna do is it's going to educate the clients on the services you provide and basically sell them on your services so that they book. But it's called a funnel because the funnel is bigger at the top with all the leads and only a few make it through the bottom of the funnel being your converted clients that you will book. So to create this funnel, you can use a variety of different softwares out there, but what you wanna look for is a software that allows you to at least do automated emails to your clients, or in particular, your leads. So we use HoneyBook, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of HoneyBook here in a second, um, but you can use any CRM software out there. There's a variety of different ones. But really what you need is a software that allows you to enter clients or enter leads into them 
and then you can automate some emails that go out to these leads to basically educate them. If it can do automated text, that's even better, but basically you want a system that allows you to automate emails so that way you can process as many leads as efficiently as possible. So now I'm gonna walk you guys through the exact funnel we use here at my company, Fusion Sound and Lighting, to convert all of our clients from leads to bookings. The first thing I do or we do is we send all of our leads a brochure with complete pricing on all the things that we offer. Now, I know it is debated out in the industry as to if you should give your pricing up front or if you should not give your pricing up front. I've actually done both with my company over the years and I found it's better to give pricing up front because when I was not giving pricing and they had to schedule a consultation to learn the pricing, I had a lot of price people that all they wanted to do was know the price and what it ended up being was a waste of my time jumping on these consultation calls just for them to find out that i'm way out of their budget and there was no way i could convince them to book us it's a way of filtering through the leads so that i'm only talking to the highest possible clients that we can book. So if you look at the screen right here, I'm in HoneyBook, our system right here, and this is the automation section. So let me go back real quick. I've gone through this in some other videos on HoneyBook, and if you want more details on HoneyBook, I'll link my whole playlist on HoneyBook below. I've made two or three videos now, and also I have a referral code where you guys can get a discounted sign up if you guys wanna try out HoneyBook as well. The most powerful thing in HoneyBook is the automations, and this is where you can build out your funnels. So we have a variety of different ones that we use. We use automations for our book clients when we've sent them a proposal, et cetera. But the main one I focus on is our 30-step new wedding lead funnel. So like I mentioned, the first thing we do immediately after this automation is activated on a lead. So a lead comes in and we apply this automation to their project. The first thing again is the brochure. And we have two brochures up here at the top and that's because we price differently depending on what time of the year it is. So we have peak pricing for basically like May and October and we have non-peak pricing. So based on when a lead comes in, if they are where their event date falls, they'll get either one of those brochures. And that is a manual thing that we do. We apply either one to that lead. So if I click on any of these steps, and that's kind of how this is laid out as steps, over here on the right, you can see the actual preview text of what we send out. These emails come from Hannah, who is our basically our manager. She's the operations manager of Fusion. So the email is very much worded out as to, hey, I'm excited to learn more about your big day and pair you with the best DJ. As an initial introduction to the company, our electric brochure, electronic brochure is below. In the brochure, you're gonna find out all the amazing things. And this could be a little bit overwhelming as I imagine you've never planned a wedding before. So if you have time, I'd love to sit down with a quick consultation and discuss everything related to your wedding, the music, the vision, the DJ, that's the best fit, etc. It's a lot of fluff. I'm I'm not I'm not a big person. I did write all these out, but like um, I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. And it's got a link to Calendly. If you guys are not using Calendly, I'll quickly show that real quick because these are two of the biggest things we use in our sales funnel: our HoneyBook for automated emails, and we use Calendly, which is a software that is actually free. Or you can do the paid version where you can put some branding on it for ten bucks a month. And basically, what it allows you to do is set when you want to have consultations, and people can go in here and look and find a time that works best for them. And it also syncs with your personal calendar so that you don't book on top of other things that you are doing. Calendly, I can make a whole nother video on, but if you have not looked into Calendly, highly recommend. That's the initial email. So after that initial email is sent out, there's also an initial text that gets sent out right here. So immediately after the automation is activated, the task is populated for Hannah to send them a quick text message. And normally that text message goes somewhere along the lines of, hey, this is Hannah at Fusion Sound and Lighting, just got your lead, love to talk more about your wedding, here's a link to Calendly. It could also go somewhere along the lines of, hey, I just emailed you over the brochure, if you have any quick questions, let me know, or you can schedule a consultation, here's the Calendly. If you can't tell, the way this funnel works is we really want people to schedule a consultation. Why is that? For you guys that don't know, conversion-wise, you wanna track your conversion. Our company has about 11% conversion, so all leads that we get, and I'll go through the leads that we get, 
about 11% of our leads convert to book clients. On the contrary, the people that schedule a consultation with us, we book 77% of those. So if we can push leads to get consultations with us, we will book more clients. How the funnel works. So we're aggressively in this campaign trying to get people to schedule a consultation. And I will also preference that this is a funnel that's set up to do two things. Either one, get them to schedule a consultation or two, to just email and respond to us. That's the two things we're trying to achieve with this. We're just trying to get these leads to talk to us. We don't want to be ghosted but this is an aggressive campaign to get them to want to talk to us or to schedule a consultation. Those are the two most things that we're trying to push. So at any point in time, if a lead responds to us, like the email is back and one, maybe they say, hey, you're outside of our price range. Hey, we found another company or they reply something along the lines of, I got the information. I just need some time to look it over or they schedule a consultation. We remove them from this specific funnel. This funnel's whole purpose is to aggressively get them to talk to us or to schedule a consultation. Just wanted to preface that up front that this is not the end all be all for funnels. This is just an aggressive initial funnel for all of our leads. Basically, brochure, and a text message are the first two things we do with all of our clients. One day after that, an email goes out. Now keep in mind, this is acting like the client never responded to us. So we didn't get, they didn't text us back, they didn't email us back, nothing. They have ghosted us right now. So that's how this is laid out in aggressiveness. So the next day, there's an email that's sent out that basically says, hey, I sent you the brochure yesterday. Did you get it? Did you look it over? Would you like to schedule a consultation? Then we wait two days after that. So we're now on day four since their initial inquiry we send them another email that says hey it's been a few days since your inquiry just wanted to check in and see how things are going have you seen some of our videos on social media that's kind of how it works also at the same time four days after the project is activated we also are sending them another follow-up text and as you can see right there it's a message haven't heard back so this message literally is straight up hey Ashley, we haven't heard back from you since you inquired with our company. Just wanted to see if you got the info or if you need a little more time to look it over. Something along those lines. Then, eight days after the initial inquiry, we send them the brochure again. Hey, if you didn't see the brochure, here's the brochure again. Then, one day after that, we're going to send them another text and we're just going to provide some education here. We're going to ask them, hey, have you seen the wedding planning app that we offer, which is Vibo, of course. If you guys don't know about Vibo, go check it out. It's an amazing, awesome planning software that you can use to book more clients and make more money and save time. Vibo is awesome. Go check out my videos on Vibo. I'll link it down below as well. So now we're at nine days after the lead initially inquired and we have not heard back from them. I'm now going to dial back our aggression because they're either seeing our stuff and it's just like they're overwhelmed. They're getting a lot of info from a lot of clients or it's just not the right timing. Maybe they inquired because they saw one of our ads or they saw an awesome video we posted and they just wanted to get an idea of pricing. So we're gonna slow down on the aggression of talking then. On day 11, we're just gonna do a touching base email. We're gonna reach out to them. Hey, just wanted to touch base and see how the planning is going. Let me know if I can help or if you'd like to schedule a consultation. Again, we're trying to push the consultation. Then three days after that, we're gonna be on day 14, two weeks. We're gonna send them an email that talks about other wedding vendors. So it's literally an email that we're asking them hey, I would love to provide you with some recommendations of other vendors, or hey, are you, are you looking for other vendors? I'd love to provide you with some recommendations. Now, before we get to day 15, I am not necessarily showing you guys all the templates that we use in here, and that's because I've linked down below all of the templates that we use. So for just $5, I'm giving away the full breakdown here of when we send everything and the templates that we use so that you can use them in your business as well. So check out the link down below where you can get the exact same templates and funnel layout that we do with when and why we do every last little thing in this exact same campaign. So day 15 is again another one asking them about trying the app. Um, the app, Vibo, is one of the biggest features we use to like convert clients, so we actually send that message again if they still have not responded. Um, it never hurts if they don't respond to send it a secondary time to be like, hey, like you didn't respond. Then we get to day 16, 17, 18, 
and now we're sending them a FAQ. So this is just an email that's typed out with commonly asked questions in relationship to our company. So questions like, what's your setup and teardown fee? We don't have any fee. What is your lighting offering? Stuff like that. It's just common area questions that are commonly asked and they're answered in a short little email. And again, it's following up at the end being like, hey, would love to sit down in a consultation and explain this more. So now we get to day 23, five days after that previous email was just sent. And this is my no spam email. And this email out of all emails we use gets the biggest response. I will show you guys it because I think it's just hilarious, but literally the subject line is not trying to spam you dot 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 wedding. Hey client, I hope it doesn't feel like I'm spamming you. Are we not the right fit or is it too early in the planning process? So this email by far gets the biggest response from clients and um, it works very well, but basically it's just, hey, I hope I'm not spamming you because we have sent you a lot of emails and a lot of text up to this point and we have not heard back from you. All of this is basically, they have not heard back from us. And if you have never studied or looked into business, nine times out of 10, it takes seven to nine follow-ups before a client will interact with you. So keep that in mind why this is so long in so many emails and so many texts is because in business, normally it takes seven to nine times touching someone, just reaching out, hey, 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 before they will actually respond to you. So we do that. We just aggressively talk to them. And like I mentioned, this runs on autopilot for all of our leads, so it doesn't take up much time other than sending those texts on occasion. Speaking of text, after the no spam email, at the same time as the no spam email, we're sending them a text again that says, I haven't heard back from you. Normally it's a little more aggressive, like, hey, it's been almost a month now and I haven't heard back from you, something along those lines. Again, I will link all the templates that we use in the description down below. For a measly $5, you guys can get the full funnel layout of what we do. Then a task populates the change to long term. So. In HoneyBook, there are what's known as stages of projects. So you have inquiries, follow-up, we added one that's called long-term, and then clients can move to proposal sent, retainer paid, contract signed, planning, complete. So we have one called long-term. And the reason why we do that is if a lead gets to this point, 30 days in with all these text messages, all these emails we've sent, we're down to maybe like a one to 5% chance that we're ever going to hear from this client or ever book this client. So we move them to a separate stage and put them in long term. That way we're only looking at the like 20 to 50 active leads that are new and fresh. That way it's quicker for our salespeople to quickly grab that project and move them over. It's just a back end thing. You don't need to do it, but we do it. Three days after that, basically uh, four days after the no spam email, we move into what I call the long term wedding tip funnel. So what I did was I wrote down 10 tip articles are all in here all these tip articles and each one of them is a wedding tip about weddings it's n there's no sales at this point it's all education and each one of these is a tip that i wrote up about something again i'm going to link all these down below for the five dollars you're going to get my five or my 10 wedding tip articles that you can use as well in your business if you wish to but at the bottom of each one of these tips for example the first tip i sent out is about wedding budget and literally it's a tip i wrote up about wedding budget and it even has a link to the wedding budget calculator on the knot that explains what an average price for a DJ is. And it's just a long wedding tip article. There's even talk in here about tipping your wedding vendors and links to articles online. So everything I'm talking about in my wedding tip article that I'm sending out, I have reference points to actual data or web articles that back what I'm saying. And then at the bottom, all of them, they always say, if you are still looking for a DJ, feel free to contact us by replying to this email or sending us a text at our phone number. Now, like I said, these were in the long-term wedding tip funnel. And like I said, this is set up basically that now we're gonna be sending out every 15 to basically every 15 days, we're gonna be sending them a tip article. So every two weeks, they're gonna get an email wedding tip from us. And the goal here is that hopefully at this point, the lead maybe is just not ready to book a DJ yet. So I'm not gonna aggressively be selling them at all. I'm just going to send them a wedding tip. Here's a tip, here's a tip, here's a tip. It's very low on the force. Again, we started 
at the beginning when they first inquired that first 14 days is very aggressive super aggressive with texting and emailing being like hey 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 let's book let's jump on a consultation hey hey because nine times out of ten if they're inquiring with us they're inquiring with other vendors as well other dj companies so we want to be up there like hey talk to us talk to us and then after that point we back it off a little bit maybe every five or six days then after about a month or so we drop down to pretty much every other month if not a month but one cool thing we can do in honeybook and we do this is we do a follow-up seven months to the wedding five months to the wedding and three months out and we basically word the templates that we know that like hey i just looked it's seven months till your wedding just wanted to check in and see if you're still looking for a dj here's a link to calendly to schedule a call hey just saw it's five months to your wedding most couples are booking with us five to six months out so i'd love to jump on a call to talk with you three months out this one's actually worded like last minute booking because i mean three months out that's last minute booking Last minute wedding DJ. Hey, Ashley, it's less than three months to your wedding. Do you still need a DJ question mark? Very aggressive. It's like three months out. Then we have a automated uh, task that populates to remove and archive this client once it is 30 days out from their project. Because 99% of the time, we're no longer going to be booking this client if they get to this point. So um, that way, once it's 30 days out from the wedding, we're assuming at this point they've ghosted us completely, they've moved us to spam, whatever. We're deleting them from our system because we don't need their info anymore. That right there is the full funnel that we use to funnel all of our leads and book as many as possible. So as you can see, our funnel is very long. And basically, we never leave a lead alone unless they tell us to. We are gonna be constantly in communication with them, basically up until their wedding, because maybe they want a rental, maybe they want other stuff, but every lead, again, normal leads take seven to nine touches before they respond to you. So our funnel is set up to constantly be in communication with them. And again, it's set up on autopilot. Yes, our text messages are manual, but in HoneyBook, we have a task window. So because this is set up as an automation, again, go check the HoneyBook videos out. But when those tasks to send those text messages occur, they pop up in the task window. So it makes it super easy for whoever is running our backend administration. Every day, they just go check the task window. If it says to send two texts, they send those two texts, mark them done. If it says 20 texts, they just send those 20 texts and they're done. But like I said, they're all templates. We have all the templates that for what they're sending for the text messages. And if you want the templates, it'll be linked down in the description down below. Again, for just $5, I'm gonna give away a list of everything I just went through, the timing of when you send everything, and the templates you use. The only thing I'm not including is a brochure because I don't actually have like an easily shareable PDF. My uh, brochure is built in HoneyBook, so I can't easily share that with you guys. Otherwise, I would include it in there as well. But for $5, I'm gonna give you all the email templates and all the texting templates and the timing for this exact funnel. So now I wanna give you guys some real expectations as to what you can expect from leads in terms of conversion ratios. So that way you can kind of judge your business based on where you're at and where you're getting your leads to see if it is a viable option. And all of these percentages that I'm about to mention, for any of you guys that have never done a conversion percentage, basically all you need to do is take your leads from say Wedding Wire. How many leads did you get and how many bookings did you get off of those leads? Divide the number of bookings by the number of leads and you have your percentage for your conversion ratio. So speaking about Wedding Wire and the Knot, these are our mass market leads. Basically, we're paying the market for a bunch of leads to try and book them. They are the hardest leads when it comes to conversion. And typically you can expect with mass market leads anywhere from a five to 15% conversion ratio, depending on the source and depending on the quality of leads you're getting from these mass market sources. Over the last two years now of doing mass market leads, predominantly with wedding shows, wedding wire and the knot, 
we've seen an average of about 9% conversion ratio. Wedding shows for us tend to be a little bit higher. We're at about the 12 to 14%. And our wedding wire in the knot, it fluctuates every year from anywhere as low as 4% we've seen from wedding wire the knot specifically, or we've seen as high as 11 or 12%. It really just depends on the year and how quickly we're getting to leads, and we'll get to that in a second. But those are the conversion numbers you should expect for a mass market lead. Moving over to your direct leads, or basically your referral leads, you can expect to see anywhere from 20 to upwards of 50, 60, 70% conversion ratios with your direct referral leads when it comes to vendor referrals, client referrals, friends and family. These leads are the best leads you could ever get. Our personal average over the last two years at Fusion Sound and Lighting is about a 29%. Again, some sources are higher than others and it fluctuates on the year. It's And it really depends on the strategies you implement those years and that's a great number to track so that you can see what you're doing with your marketing and how it is affecting your conversions. So I would imagine some of you guys that are watching this right now are wondering with mass market leads generating a lower percent conversion why in the world would i bother with mass market leads why would i not just focus on referral or direct based leads and overall i would say you're not wrong but it heavily depends on the size of your business and what your goals are if you are a solo op or if you are a multi-op it really determines on what you're trying to achieve with that business also, it also determines whether you're a solo op or a multi-op, you have different goals when it comes to the events and your growth strategies. You also, whether you're a new, existing, or growing business, determines what your growth strategies are gonna be with your marketing to gain more leads as well. And then above all, there's also this thing called money, and in general, marketing costs money, whether it's direct leads, or mass market leads, it's gonna cost you money in some way, shape, or form to grow this, these leads. Let me give you some recommendations based on where you might be in your business and how you can utilize different methods and some different strategies to grow, whether it's in direct leads or if it's in mass market leads. And let's get into that. And then after that, I'm gonna talk based on budgets you should allocate for marketing. Every business should have a budget for marketing. So I'm gonna start with the solo ops out there. Obviously as a solo op, you are going to be capped on your event total at some point in time. Not only on a workload standpoint in terms of burnout, but also just in a date situation. Most of our events are gonna be on Saturdays, in particular if you're in the wedding industry, so you will come to an event cap. So mass market leads, when it comes to Wedding Wire, The Knot, Facebook, Google, are not necessarily the best source of leads for you as a solo op. Normally the best route for a solo op, and I did this personally myself, is to focus your efforts on building your direct lead funnels. This will naturally come in the form of doing more and more events and delivering a great performance, but also you can speed it up by doing networking with all sorts of vendors in the wedding industry in particular, specifically with venues and planners, ask to take them to lunch, to dinner, to talk business, talk shop, and you really want to leverage them heavily. You wanna give them vendor gifts. Uh, one of the things we started doing last year is we started sending out wine bottles to all of our top vendors that we love working with to help build those direct referrals that we are getting. And let me tell you, if you actually take the time and energy to spend time networking with the top venues, the top planners in your area, we are nowhere near like a big, we haven't like got a lot of venues on our roster yet. But if you take the time to slowly build them, it pays off tremendously. And like I said, all of these cost money in some way, shape, or form. Buying gifts for vendors, buying lunches, taking time out of your days to go network with other vendors. This does take time and does take money to do, but it yields tremendously on the back end because that person is going to be sending you leads that have a very high chance of booking in comparison to mass market leads. So the time and money is well worth it. And as a solo op, I said basically mass market leads are not the best 
thing for you personally to do unless you are new and trying to grow and you have the money to do it. Because like I said, to build these direct referral relationships, you really have to do events. And to get events, well, you, you have to be able to market yourself and the best place to get events when you are new and have no direct referrals is to spend money on mass market sources. And this leads me into some recommendations and some strategies around multi-ops. As a multi-op, you first off should definitely be building your direct referral report, trying to build up those vendor relationships as best you can. But normally, as a multi-op, you have multiple DJs. You're trying to fill multiple DJs calendars. Your event cap normally doesn't come into play. Normally you have enough guys in place and if you grow structurally, you add on more DJs in a strategic manner, you're going to need more and more and more leads to fill these guys' calendars. So you have to leverage a combination of building these direct leads, these direct referral leads from vendors and clients and you have to pump money into these mass market lead funnels, whether it's wedding wire, the knot, Google ads, Facebook ad, Instagram ads, to bring in more leads so that you can ultimately book more and more and more weddings to fuel that growth as a multi-op and to fill everyone's calendar. Some strategies you can use around or some tips around mass market leads. You, in the sense of a mass market lead, are normally in competition with all the other DJs. Direct referrals, you're not normally as much in competition with other DJ companies out there or other DJ multi-ops or solo ops. When they're sending a direct referral, they're normally just looking at you, maybe one other person. These direct mass market leads, whether it's Wedding Wire, The Knot, Facebook ads, Instagram, all these people are actively searching for DJs. So you're in competition with pretty much every other DJ company out there in terms of getting these leads. So speed is the most important thing when it comes to these leads. When you get these leads, whether it's a wedding wire they're not sending you the lead or a Facebook ad where people respond to it, you need to act absolutely as fast as you possibly can to respond to that lead and to get them the information that they are looking for. You also need to, on these sites, you need to stay very current with your posting you need to post new photos because if you're running ads and you have no new content or any good content on those pages, it's not really gonna work because nine times out of 10 when they see an ad, they're gonna go to your page and then from your page to your website to inquiry unless you're doing the direct messaging feature, but still they're gonna check out your social pages because that's where the ad is present. Same thing on Wedding Wire The Knot. They're gonna see the photos on your page first and they're gonna see your reviews. On Wedding Wire The Knot, the reviews are extremely important. So you wanna be actively getting reviews from all of your events on those sources. I did make a video specifically on Wedding Wire and the Knot and how to book more leads on Wedding Wire and the Knot. So I'm gonna link that as well. I made that a couple years ago, but it's also got some great resources when it comes to Wedding Wire and the Knot. Now, a lot of people that get on Wedding Wire and the Knot, like I talked about, the yield you're gonna get, the conversion ratio is very low. You can normally expect a maximum of 10% conversion ratio on your Wedding Wire and the Knot. And I also want to preference that number varies based on the market that you are in. It could be higher, it could be lower. What also can be higher or lower is how much you have to pay to be in a top rank spot on Wedding Wire and The Knot. I'm gonna fully disclose the numbers for you guys real quick here and explain why and how you can calculate to see if Wedding Wire and The Knot is a valuable option for you. So between Wedding Wire and The Knot, I'm just gonna combine them both together for you guys. You can divide this into, um, but I pay for Wedding Wire and The Knot in two different regions in my area. All in, I'm spending about $13,000 a year on Wedding Wire and The Knot to be in a featured position, not the top spotlight position. We are a featured position in two different regions. If you don't understand what I'm saying, Wedding Wire and The Knot breaks up every state into regions and you pay for each region individually. Some regions cost more than others. Some are extremely expensive, especially up in the New York, New Jersey and California areas. So your prices may vary, but in general, I'm in the North Carolina regions. I'm paying $13,000 to be in a featured position on two different regions. On average, roughly, Wedding Wire and The Knot combined produce about 400 leads a year for my company. And over the last three years, I've had an average of about a 9% conversion ratio on those leads, 
which is going to yield 36 total weddings that have been booked because of wedding wire in the knot. Now, our average price point is a little over $2,000 right now. If I average all the events we do in a year, last year we were at around $2,100. But to keep the math simple, let's just go with two grand. So those 36 bookings we got off of Wedding Wire in the Knot generated $72,000 in revenue. So I spent $13,000 and got $72,000. But let's take it a step further. The average, I'm a multi-op, so this calculation really only factors into multi-ops. If you're a solo op, you don't have this cost. But I have a cost per event for sending my DJs, sending my assistants. I have to pay these guys to go do these weddings for me. And on average, they're basically all together around $1,200 is what is getting paid out for the cost of doing that event. Your numbers may vary, and I highly recommend you, if you don't know these numbers, if you don't know the average ticket sale you had last year and the average cost to do your events, I highly recommend you sit down, find some Excel sheets or find someone that knows how to do numbers, talk to your accountant, talk to someone, and figure out what your numbers, your conversion ratios are. I literally spend hours learning and diving deep into the data, especially in this January season and learning every number that we needed in terms of conversions. And then by knowing my numbers, I can project and calculate where we're gonna be at the end of the year and how much profit we're gonna make, how much revenue we're gonna make, what our expenses are gonna be like, et cetera. So highly recommend you learn your numbers. So there's a couple of ways we can look at this. We're generating $72,000 in revenue with $13,000 in cost. What we could do is divide that $13,000 by the amount of events we did, which brings me to a number of 361. So for every wedding we book, because we book 36 weddings, it cost us $360 to acquire that wedding because of the marketing expense of wedding wine and the not. Now, because my average price point is $2,000 and we pay out about $1,200 is what my cost of that event is, minus another $361, we are still profiting off that event to the tune of about $430. Now, that is very low when it comes to actually making profit on that event. It's not as high as what I would like it to be. But like I pointed out, I'm a multi-op. So my goal is to fill guys' calendars. For the acquisition cost of acquiring another 36 weddings, which is practically one of my DJs, it is well worth it because I'm giving them events and they're making money and they're building direct referrals by doing these events with all kinds of other vendors and therefore we are growing the company. So it is very highly beneficial to do that. I also want to preference if you're a solo op, you will not have that $12,000 or $1,200 cost of event unless you are physically putting your own money if you're accounting for how much you personally are making off each event. But in general, because you're the one doing the labor on the event, you're only gonna see that $361 as the cost to acquire that event. I hope that makes sense. I mean, I just wanna rough the numbers again. I pay $13,000 for Wedding Wire in the Knot last year. I generated $72,000 in revenue or 36 events. And based on those events, after I pay the guys to do it and pay Wedding Wire in the Knot, we're still making $15,000 in profit. So that's how Wedding Wire in the Knot works. I hope that makes sense, but let's talk budget. And if you guys are still watching the video right now, I want you guys to put down in the comments down below, hashtag squad, because you guys are troopers and you guys are trying to grow your business and learn methods of growing your business. Put hashtag squad in the comment section down below. I appreciate all you guys that are trying to learn and grow your business. Budget wise, if you have a DJ business and you do not currently have a marketing budget, I need you to like take a second, go to the computer and let's figure out your budget and you need to start tracking your numbers. Numbers are, I can't stress this enough, knowing your numbers, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, when I first started my DJ business, I didn't really track the numbers that well. I just tracked high level numbers, like how much money we brought in, how much we paid out, how much we were left over with. But when you really dive into the numbers to understand how many leads times my conversions, times my average price point generates this much revenue after the cost of the events, I'm left with this much, you are in control 
of your business and you can drive that business to where you want to go. And that is what I have been able to do over the last two to three years now is really harness the power of knowing your numbers. Then you can structure your growth and make really good financial decisions as to how to grow your business. So marketing budget. If you are in a state of kind of constant where you're not really trying to grow a lot, you're really just trying to maintain your current amount, maybe you're a solo op and you're just trying to keep in uh, touch those direct referrals, you're trying to give out some vendor gifts and like, Keep all of the people that are in your close network sending you leads so you can raise your price and keep a high dollar amount on your thing. You should be spending anywhere from five to 10% of your top line revenue for the year in marketing. For quick reference on that, if you make $100,000 in top line revenue, you should be spending anywhere from five to $10,000 in that total year in marketing budget. Now on the contrary, if you are trying to grow like me, or I'm assuming a lot of you guys, you're trying to grow, you're trying to scale your business, you should be spending anywhere from 10 to 15% of your top line revenue again in marketing. Again, if you make $100,000 last year, you generate $100,000 in revenue for your DJ company, or say you made $10,000 in revenue, you wanna take 10 to 15% of that. So if you did $10,000, you say you're you're a new person, you're just did maybe a handful of events last year and you generate $10,000 in revenue. You should be spending $1,000 to $1,500 in ad or marketing budget for next year. Maybe you up that to 2,000 because you wanna grow to be at 20,000 this year. You gotta think about where you wanna get. Marketing is normally an equation and if you want to get to, say you want to grow from 100,000 to 200,000, well now you need to be spending anywhere from 20 to $30,000 in marketing expense to grow to that point. That's the equation you need to know for your marketing expense. Now, where you actually spend your money is up to you and the strategy you want to implement for your marketing. And at this point, I do want to preference you guys or just let you know if you didn't already, I offer one-to-one -one sessions. So if you want to book an hour of my time, we can talk strategically on what your marketing strategy is, where I think it might need to be tweaked, or we can talk about your numbers, how to calculate your numbers, anything you want to know related to business, or if you just want to pick my brain, you just want to talk. I have a link down below. It's basically calendly.com slash FSL meet slash let's talk. And we can sit down for an hour. There's a small fee for it. Sit down for an hour and we can talk about all the ways to grow your business and to really make it a profitable and successful DJ business. Now, this is probably, if not, if you're at this point, definitely put hashtag squad, but this video right here, I have got to say, is probably one of the most informational, valuable videos I have probably ever put out on this YouTube channel. So if you could, hit the like button, put down the comment section down below where you're at in your business, where you're trying to get to, and let's Let's, let's do this thing. I mean, hit the subscribe button. I really want to make 2023 about helping you guys with the DJ business because it is the most important thing ever that I've learned over the last two to three years now in terms of trying to actually make this a career, make this profitable, which I have been able to do, thankfully, and I'm really blessed to say that I've done that, but it's all about the numbers. It's all about the business side of the things and really growing what your passion is, taking it and making it a business, and then you can structure it to grow and be successful. So again, I'm gonna link down below a couple, like a, a lot of links. I mean, I, I'm gonna uh, put down below a lot of resources for you guys to go check out previous videos I've done. I'm going to have the full email template guideline down there for $5. Again, you can get my full template for all the texting and emails for only five bucks. It's going to be down there below. Check that out, download it. You can use them for your business. They're just rough templates. Uh, feel free to change them too if you wish. And um, if you want to go a little further and have a one-to-one -one session with me, there's a link down below. You can schedule basically a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and we can discuss anything about your business. Hope you guys like this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Keep the record spinning. Peace.